Hey guys, so this video is all about the Twitter ad platform. This is the first video in lesson six um, about you know other traffic sources, and I really wanna give you a rundown of the best uses for Twitter, how we use Twitter at Digital Marketer, um, and some other nuances about the platform. So with Twitter, uh, very similar to Facebook, you can reach almost any market. Uh, Twitter is, uh, you know, very well adapted. There are a lot of users um, and there are also a lot, a lot of targeting options. Um, it's especially great for running traffic to cold audiences. So we've talked a lot about sending traffic to blog posts and, and different pieces of content that provide value up front. And Twitter is a really great platform uh, to do so and to introduce yourself to someone. A big reason for that is that people are really used to consuming content on Twitter. So whereas on Facebook, you're more so there to scroll through your news feed and look at pictures of your mom um, or your friend's dog. Um, on Twitter, people are really there to click on links and to read. Um, so to distribute content in someone's Twitter feed, um, it's really, really effective and it's definitely not as invasive as other platforms. So we'll get into the actual uh, Twitter ads manager here in a second, but I just want to go over some different kinds of campaigns that you can create in Twitter. So very much like Facebook, um, you know, when you create a new campaign, these objectives should align um, with whatever the objective of your campaign is, right? So you can run ads to, to generate more followers for um, your Twitter handle. You can run ads for websites clicks or conversions, tweet engagements, app installments, app installs or engagements, leads on Twitter, which is um, a really cool feature that we'll talk about that I really haven't seen on any other ad platform, video views, and then you can do a custom campaign. So just to give you a little rundown, these are really the three objectives that I suggest you use, you know, when setting up your traffic system and really, um, you know, running traffic for leads and sales and, and not necessarily followers. Um, the first would be website clicks or conversions. So um, the second objective that we see here. Um, so with website clicks or conversions, um, that would be when, you know, you're sending traffic to your website. Maybe you're sending traffic to a blog post. Maybe you're sending traffic to a YouTube video. You're sending traffic off of Twitter. Um, so, you know, we would definitely select website clicks as the objective there. This also works when sending traffic to a lead capture page. So if you're wanting to generate leads, you know, off of the Twitter platform and you're wanting to send traffic to um, one of your landing or lead capture pages, um, I would definitely, definitely use that objective. But what they also have is uh, leads on Twitter, and these are called Twitter cards, um, and they're actually a type of Twitter card, and, and we'll go through that. Um, but what you're actually able to do with these Twitter cards is make a specific offer in someone's newsfeed and allow them to click a button um, to, you know, get whatever you're, you're offering, whatever your lead magnet is, and you're actually generating the lead inside of the platform. So they click to download and you're getting their Twitter email address, which is great. Uh, that means that it's actually an email address that they probably use if they use it to, if they use that email address to log in uh, to Twitter. So Twitter actually creates a CSV file for you of these leads, of people that are opting in on the platform. So keep in mind that you're not having to ask them to go to an external link um, to then opt in. You're removing that part of the process and you're able to generate the leads uh, right on the platform. Another objective that we use is video views. So just like Facebook, we can run uh, videos in the Twitter feed. Um, this is great for retargeting back to a sales page, branding videos, anything you wanna do with video, um, there is that objective um, within Twitter. 
So keep in mind that these are the objectives of the campaigns and your objectives should always align with whatever your end goal is. So I just wanted to cover the three that I think are definitely the most important and the most used. If you do use the other, they're fairly self-explanatory in terms of what your end goal is for that specific campaign. So now I want to go through four different types of ads, and these aren't uh, necessarily um, declared by Twitter as the four different types of ads, but they're really how I see it on Twitter, and I think it will allow you to understand the different kinds of ads that you can run more clearly. So the first would just be a regular tweet, right? Uh, You know, any tweet that someone might send out, no image, uh, just a simple headline, a link, maybe um, there's a hashtag there uh, so that you can hit a relevant audience. This is just a tweet with no image, right? Um, And, you know, we will post tweets a lot organically from Digital Marketer and Ryan. And then sometimes if we notice that a tweet is getting a lot of engagement and a lot of clicks, that's the market telling us that that's a really engaged tweet, right? That's, That's a really successful tweet. So we'll go ahead and we'll put money behind that tweet and we'll actually run it to cold audiences, right? So this is when, this is an example of when we would do something like this, a tweet with no image, um, just a regular old tweet that links over to your blog or wherever you're sending people to pixel them and introduce yourself. Um, This is the first, you know, type of tweet that I want to cover, a tweet with, with no image. So the second would be a tweet with an image. And when we first started running Twitter ads, I actually found that tweets with no images had much higher click-through rates because the tweets with images would actually produce another link next to the link that you actually want them to click, right? The link to your website. And so therefore, I always recommended not adding images to your tweets because it decreased your click-through rate. Well, that's definitely no longer the case on Twitter. You'll notice that the only link here is the link that we actually want them to click on, a link over to our 101 best email subject lines blog post. And we've just created a highly engaging image, which it doesn't have to be under 20% like Facebook. We've just created a really engaging image that people are going to want to share and favorite and click on. So you'll notice the amount of retweets and favorites that we're getting on these ads, which is another really big benefit of Twitter. Um, You'll get a lot of engagement on your tweets, especially if you don't make them super salesy. If you're offering something of value, you'll get a lot of engagement. So this is a second type of tweet um, that we would would run, right? A tweet with an image. Um, So like, like I said, you'll notice that the headline is simply the headline of the article and we're just putting that link right there and using a really engaging image to catch people's attention. So another type of ad, um, this gets into the Twitter cards that I was talking about. And there are a few different Twitter cards. Um, So with a card, you can either send traffic to a website like you see right here, or you can generate the lead directly in the Twitter feed. So it's really whatever your goal is. So for example, for this first one, we used a Twitter card because it was really, you know, visually pleasing and we were selling tickets to Traffic and Conversion Summit. So we wanted this ad to stand out a little bit more while we really wanted this ad to scream content, right? This is just a promoted tweet. We're sending you to really great content. Um, You know, there's nothing super special about this where here we're really trying to say, hey, you know, this is a must attend event for digital marketers and it's 75% off for a limited time. Click below um, with a really nice image of San Diego and you'll notice that the card has the book now and we were able to put another headline there that says 65% off must attend digital marketing event. 
So this is one type of Twitter card, and this is a Twitter card that links to a website, right? So we're using this to run people to the TNC sales page. Um, this is a great way to run people to an offer, and if you really wanted to, you could test you know, a tweet with an image to content. If you wanted to test that as a Twitter card, it's always something that I do test, but I find that this gets a ton more engagement and more clicks because people do perceive it as content. So we have a tweet with no image, um, you know, just really promoting some sort of cold traffic offer, a tweet with an image, which we usually use to cold traffic. And then we have a Twitter card that links to a website, which is best to go to the sales pages or, you know, if you're sending someone to a landing page to opt in for something. This is a great option, um, a Twitter card that links to a website. So the fourth option is the lead gen card that I was telling you about. And this actually allows you to generate a lead on the platform. So you'll notice that, um, you know, the ad copy is very similar to the ad copy that we use to warm traffic from Facebook. We're hitting a pain point. Want more clicks from social media? Download our 72 proven headlines. You can copy and paste them. If they hit download now, we're going to automatically get their Twitter, their email, address, whatever email address they use to log into Twitter, um, that's going to populate in a CSV file for us. So just to go back over this, guys, um, you know, a tweet with no image, just, you know, the headline uh, with with your link. Um, if you want to add a hashtag, um, I haven't found that that increases click through rates or increases engagement, but I think it helps speak to the the end market there. So you'll notice writer's block, 212 blog post ideas, and we send them right to a blog post. Here, we just copied the headline of the blog post and, and made that the copy here with the link and a very engaging image to really encourage people to, to share this and to click. Here we're using a Twitter card that links to a website and we're sending them to a sales page for an event. So we fancied it, fancied it up a little bit. We wanted to be able to add that extra copy at the bottom um, for the uh, you know must attend digital marketing event, right? And then here we're looking at a lead gen card where you're actually generating leads in the Twitter feed. They don't have to hop over to a landing page um, to opt in here. So that would be, you know, the the fourth type of ad that that I recommend that you use. And of course, this one is for lead gen, and this would be to a warmer audience. So in a second, we'll hop into the ads manager and I'll show you um, exactly, you know, how to create these ads. Um, but first, you know, I just want to make sure you understand the copy aspect. So, you know, when you're running traffic to content, you know, your tweet should be the headline of your content. You can be very straightforward with these tweets. People are reading them very, very fast. You need to be very to the point as to what they're going to see on the other side. Um, here are a few more examples. The one on the left we saw um, in in lesson two, and this goes to um, a piece of content with an infographic, 10 cheap ways to increase a home's value. That is the, the headline of the post. Same thing on the right, seven lessons learned from 567 Facebook ad campaigns in one year. Engaging image, and again, look at all of the engagement we have on that tweet. Um, you know, they're distributing this ad ad for us, right? They're distributing an ad that we we paid for. Here are a few more examples. Um, it, you know, um, on the left, this goes to our customer value optimization blog post, which really explains our business model. So this is coming from Ryan. So I'm going to use a little bit more personality. Again, you always have to think about, am I creating the correct marketing message uh, based off of, you know, who I'm speaking from and who I'm speaking to? So with Ryan, we're going to add a little bit more personality. This is quite possibly the most important blog post I've ever written. And at the bottom, we have all marketers and entrepreneurs are at various levels of stuck. So we're sending traffic, you know, we're targeting small business owners and people that would be interested in learning about our business model. Where on the right, 
we kept it very straight to the point, leading to a blog post about content marketing, and it said how we grew a blog from zero to six million. Again, with a link, and we just uh, reiterated the headline there uh, on the really, really engaging image. I just showed you guys this, but here is a Twitter card um, for website clicks to a website. This was for Traffic and Conversion Summit. We were selling tickets to our event. And here's another look at the Legion card I was telling you about. And you'll notice on the right-hand side at the bottom, it says the headlines will arrive via email shortly. Click here. Um, and so that is what shows after you hit the download now button. And once they click, they can actually hop over to whatever page you've created for them to download the templates or whatever page would naturally come after an opt-in. They can click right there and hop over and receive the deliverables that you're promising in the newsfeed. So with Twitter, just like Facebook, it's very easy to split test, you know, ad copy and creatives. You'll notice here we were split testing a little bit of copy, um, but they allow you in the news feed or in the ads manager uh, to split test headlines. You can create different campaigns to create different variations. Really on Twitter, I suggest testing, you know, three to four headlines um, to really see if, if your copy can speak to different kinds of people. You can test shorter character limits um, and, and definitely test asking a question. Um, but really, again, think about at what point am I in the relationship here? Am I sending them to a piece of content? If I am, let's just make sure the headline on the content is engaging and that we're using that headline line in the tweet. So now let's go through the targeting options on Twitter. So first, you'll notice that they're going to ask you to select locations, gender, language, you know, normal ad platform stuff. Just like on Facebook, I select the four top countries where we run traffic or where where we actually have buyers and therefore we run traffic. So U.S., Canada, U.K., Australia, and the same as we talked about in the Facebook lesson, unless you know really specifically that you only sell to one gender, it's really smart to keep any gender selected because you never really know um, who your ad is going to appeal to. With the languages, I just leave that blank. Select devices, platforms, and car carriers. Again, I let it run on all devices and platforms um, and carriers just to see what really resonates with your audience. So you'll notice that there are a few um, targeting options on Twitter. So you can target people by keywords. That means, you know, keywords that they've actually used in their tweets or things that they've searched on Twitter, which is very cool. You can uh, target followers. So that would be people that follow specific Twitter handles. You can target interests, which is very similar to Facebook's More Demographics tab. Interests, um, we'll go into that, but um, it's more interest based, you know, on categories. Tailored audiences, that's Twitter's version of custom audiences on Facebook. So those are going to be your retargeting audiences that you can set up in Twitter. TV targeting, you can actually target people that are talking about certain TV shows. It's not something that we use or that I've seen anyone use successfully, but if for some reason that really relates to your market, that could be a great option for you. And then behaviors is all based off of third-party data, and we'll get into that here in a second. So just to start with the keyword targeting. Keyword targeting allows you to reach Twitter users based on keywords in their search queries, recent tweets, and tweets they recently engaged with. So this is really cool, guys. If you have certain keywords that you know are very relevant to your market, this is a great way to get in front of people that have searched those keywords or put those keywords in recent tweets or engage with tweets who have those keywords in the tweet. So you can really see, um, you can really see the opportunity here. And, and this is something that you don't find on any platform other than maybe Google. Um, so a very, very interesting option here. You'll notice a few different um, 
matching terms when you're when you're looking at the keyword targeting. So if you enter a keyword such as content marketing, or in this example, um, you know, I love coffee, coffee. Um, a broad match would be matches on tweets containing keywords in any order, including other words in between. It includes related terms, stem variations, synonyms, misspellings, and slang, specified by leaving out any punctuation. So for example, if you want uh, to reach people, you know, that, you know, have love coffee in their tweets or they've searched love coffee, um, that will match to tweets such as I love coffee or to something that's, you know, a synonym like latte, I adore my morning latte. So if you really, you know, want to reach, um, if, if you have a term and you're willing to broad match, which is a great place to start so that you're not really honing in on too small of an audience, um, you're going to start with the broad match and you're going to say, you know, here are my keywords, but I'm willing to go outside the bubble a little bit and let your algorithm find people who are really specifically interested or who, who are interested in this topic, but they may have tweeted about something, you know, that isn't coffee, right? Um, or they might have tweeted about blogging instead of content marketing. So if you choose phrase match, um, that matches on tweets containing keywords in exact order. So if you just want people that tweeted that exact term, you know, I just want people that tweeted content marketing, um, let's not get crazy here, let's not use synonyms or variations, you're gonna go with phrase match. So with negative unordered match, this is tweets containing the negative keyword in any order, including other words in between. Those will be ineligible for matching. So if you want to go the negative route, this would be sort of, you know, the negative broad match, right? Um, if you really want to get specific and go the negative route, you would do negative phrase match. So, you know, tweets containing the negative word in exact order with no other words in between. Um, you wouldn't match with those keywords, right? And I'll show you guys where this lives inside of the ads manager, but I just wanted you to understand the different types of keyword targeting. Um, broad match, again, um, a little bit broader. You're, you're going to include synonyms. And, you know, I have found we've had the best results from broad match because it gives us a bigger audience. Um, but if you're in a bigger market and you know those specific keywords that you want to use, uh, definitely go with phrase match. So here's an example of something that we ran to um, keywords. So we ran this tweet to the keyword content marketing and we got very, very cheap clicks um, because not only were we using the hashtag to really call out the content marketing audience, um, we're talking to writers, writer's block, 212 blog post ideas, and we put this ad in front of people who had tweeted or searched um, or engaged with tweets around content marketing. So this is an example of a tweet that we used used um, to, to put, um, to um, advertise with keywords. So now we're going to look at the ad followers option, right? And this is where you can target people um, who follow specific handles. So this is very, very similar to um, your Facebook interest targeting. This is going to take research, um, but this is definitely the most effective form of targeting. And it's going to be where you should start. Um, because you know your market by now, you've completed the, the marketing checklist, and you're going to be able to put yourself in front of your audience because you know where they're hanging out. So revisit your targeting checklist. Where is your market hanging out on Twitter? What are authority figures that they may follow on Twitter? Competitors, brands in the market, maybe websites that they visit that have Twitter handles, books, magazines, events. If you could look at your, you know, ideal target prospects, Twitter handle, who would they follow, right? That's who you need to get in front of and you can do so um, through, through this targeting option on Twitter. 
Here's what it looks like. Um, and we were targeting people interested in Facebook advertising. And so here are the handles um, that we targeted. Targeted. This was a very successful campaign. A quick tip. If you are t- um, running ads on Facebook or another ad platform and you have found successful targeting options, carry those over to Twitter, right? Um, you know, similar people are going to be hanging out on the Twitter handles that were hanging out on the Facebook page or the LinkedIn groups, right? Um, so feel free to carry to carry the targeting over um, to, to the Twitter platform. Uh, for this platform to cold traffic um, with this sort of targeting, I recommend really finding a spot between half a million and two million people. It matters a little bit less on this platform than Facebook because the optimization is different, um, but I've really found that to be the sweet spot. If you look below, it says also target your followers. I usually keep that checked unless we're going to cold traffic um, because, you know, we've already uh, introduced ourselves to these people, right? Also target users like your followers. Um, I found that that allows us for more scale. Um, So I always leave the also target users like your followers checked. If you want to split test it, definitely feel, feel open to that. Um, or if you feel like you're not getting enough reach with a campaign later, then go back and check that box. But here's an example of how to target um, different handles um, where your market might be hanging out. So now on to the interest targeting. So this is very broad, and I honestly wouldn't recommend using this. I just wanted to show you what it looks like. But really, they've just compiled people into these you know, sort of big, broad interests like government, entrepreneurship. You'll notice that even if I just check one of these, it already has an estimated audience size of 6 million, which is very, very big. So feel free to scroll through there. Um, If you find something really related to your market, give it a test. But overall, I would really ignore the interest targeting. So now on to tailored audiences. And like I said, these are very similar to custom audiences on Facebook. And they allow you to define groups of existing and prospective customers based off of web behavior. So you can put, you know, tags and code from Twitter on your website, just like we did with Twitter or just like we did with Facebook to start populating those audiences and building these remarketing lists, which is very, very important, guys. You know, if we're sending traffic from Twitter to cold audience to our blog post, we are able to pixel them on Facebook, even though they came from Twitter. We are able to pixel them on Google. Um, But we absolutely want to pixel them on Twitter because that's the platform they came from. And we want to be able to speak to them again in the future. So these targeting option audiences are people who have visited your website. You can upload email addresses. Um, So, you know, you can upload your email address to Twitter, just like um, just like Facebook. You can upload Twitter IDs and other CRM data. So like I said, these are very similar to custom audiences on Facebook. And here's what it looks like. You can see that, you know, I could uh, choose to target everyone who's hit digitalmarketer.com in this specific time period. I could target them with an ad. So TV targeting is really best for bigger brands. Um, You know, Twitter's initiative here is for brands who are running commercials on TV to actually be able to extend their advertising over to the Twitter platform. So not that this couldn't apply to you. Um, If for some reason you can think of a specific TV show that's really relevant to your market, uh, definitely test it out. Test out the TV targeting. Um, But for most businesses, um, that won't really apply. Behavior targeting. Uh, This is the last targeting option. And this is where Twitter has actually paired with third party data sources, um, you know, lists of people who have purchased particular products or uh, gone to particular events. Um, You know, there's all kinds of options in here. It's really something you have to dig around. Is there something that relates to your market? Um, Do you, are you in the pet market? If so, it would be wise to target pet care buyers, as you can 
see on the screen. For a lot of businesses, the behavior targeting probably won't apply, but it's definitely worth just clicking through every little section here to see if you can find something to test. Obviously, with the behavior targeting, you can't really control the size of the audience, so you kind of just have to go with, with what options are available for you. So now we're going to hop into the Twitter platform um, just so I can show you how to set up a campaign. So I've already gone into the ads manager and decided to create a campaign for website clicks or conversions. Um, so you're going to, you know, give your campaign a title. Um, so, you know, we're just going to do tests so we can keep flying through here. Website tag for conversion tracking. So this means that yes, there is a conversion tracking pixel um, on our website and it is verified. So we're good to go there. We're going to run this campaign uh, continuously. We don't want to customize the start and end dates unless it's something that's very time specific. So if you are optimizing if you're sending traffic to a landing page to generate a lead you you don't want to do the lead gen cards in the Twitter news or Twitter feed you want to just send traffic over to your landing page so this is where you're going to select um, the conversion tag to tell Twitter yes they did opt-in they did complete that action if you're just going for clicks to a blog post, um, you won't necessarily have to select a tag. So as you scroll down, um, a, few, a few things to note here, guys. Number one, let's just look at these different kinds of tweets so that you know what's going on. So a tweet with no image, right? If you wanna do a tweet with no image, then you can either select an existing tweet that's already on your timeline, or you can write the tweet right here with the link and everything and ignore this card. So if you wanna do a tweet with just the tweet and the link, you're either gonna type it here or you're gonna select an existing tweet. If you want to do a tweet with an image, you're gonna hop over here, write your tweet out, and then you're going to add the image right here. It's gonna say image, you're gonna add it, um, it's really easy. Again, if you already have posted that tweet to, um, to your Twitter handle, you could go ahead and select it over here. Um, so this is where you would go a tweet with an image, add the image here, or select it over here. Now, if you're wanting to do a Twitter card to a website, so this is when we start to get into the cards. Um, so you're actually going to write a tweet up here so this copy, TNC is the most attended event for digital marketers, this copy up here, that's going to go in this box. But for the card, because it is clickable, you're going to put the URL in right here, the image, the headline, which is what you see right here, the headline, and then you're going to add a call to action and you can name the tweet. So... Um, just to go over, if you're just doing a tweet with no, with just copy and, and a link, it's going to go here. Or you're going to select it from over here. If you want to do a tweet with an image, go this route or select it um, because you've already posted it to your timeline. If you want to do a card that links to a website, to a sales page, then you're going to write your tweet and you're going to create the card right here. So you're probably thinking, Molly, well, what about these lead gen cards that generate a lead, you know, that you're actually going to run in their feed and generate a lead right on the platform? Well, that's going to require another objective. So looking back at the menu here, um, you know, website clicks or conversions, that's what we've been living in right here. That's where you create um, these first three kinds of tweets. If you want to do the leads on Twitter and we want to do this actual card, then we're going to tell Twitter that. We're going to do a leads on Twitter campaign. So you're going to go ahead, you know, name the campaign. You want to run it continuously. And 
you're actually going to um, go ahead and fill out the card. Again, it's very similar to this, but you're not putting in a URL um, because you're not sending traffic off of the page. And this will, they'll take you through a little bit of a process where you can explain, you know, put your privacy policy in there. But I just want you to know where to go to create the different kinds of campaigns. So once you've done so, you're going to scroll down. We've already looked at these targeting options, but I just want to make sure you know where they are. You know, here's all the demographic data and here are the additional targeting options that we have already covered. Keep in mind that your estimated audience size will always appear over here. As you scroll down, you can always exclude tailored audiences. So if you're going to cold traffic and you're wanting to pixel people and send traffic to blog posts, you can exclude people who have already visited your website if you really want to go for that cold, cold traffic. And then the last step here is the budget. Um, and the budget's really going to depend, well, the, the bidding is really going to depend on what campaign you've set up. Um, but I always set, you know, a daily maximum. Again, this is whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, say we're starting with $30. I don't set a total budget because I don't want, um, you know, Twitter to try to spend a bunch of money at one time or, or be uh, weary of my total budget. I always set it at, at the daily budget. You're going to optimize for whatever your objective was. So if you did set this up for link clicks, right, you did set um, this ad up for link clicks, then you're going to go ahead and leave that. If you were sending the traffic to, um, you know, to a landing page to generate a lead and you're using, you know, this, this key conversion tag here, then that's what you're going to select. So you're just going to select whatever you're optimizing for. Um, so you can do an automatic bid, target bid, or maximum bid. And I've done a lot of testing on this, and I found, um, especially over the past few months, Twitter has really refined um, their platform, and they're getting better with the bidding. And the automatic bidding is actually performing better in terms of lower cost per click, lower cost per lead, lower cost per acquisition. Um, so let Twitter optimize um, for the bidding so that they can get you the best price um, for, you know, whatever your goal is, you know, whatever the goals are for these Twitter campaigns um, that, that you're setting up.